I was just... And it's Kung Fu Do, not Kung Fu. Okay, whatever it is, you're gonna need it if you don't get your sneakers on in two minutes flat. Hi. Hi. I, I, I had a light docket today, so uh, here I am, picking up my daughter, the way mothers do. How's my niece working out? She's perfect. Don't hold that against her. Yo, so listen, can I... You, you first. Uh, can, I, can I write you a check for the next six or ten classes or whatever? That'd be fine. If it bounces, I know where you live. <laughs> I'd like to take you to dinner. How's Saturday night? This Saturday? I know, it, it, it's short notice. No. Well, maybe some other time. No, but... no, I mean, I'd like to. That's what I meant by no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... Yes is usually the word of choice when consenting, yes. but... Great. No, no, wait, I can't on Saturday. Uh, I have a work thing and my nephew's getting adopted and it's gonna be nuts. Okay. Yeah. How's Friday? Friday's good. Really? No. Uh, I rearranged some stuff, but... Call me. I'll call you. <laughs> what were you guys talking about? Tang Sudo. Adoptions in one day? Is that reasonable, Amy? Well, adoption days have been successful in other counties. I, I think we can do it. Amy organized the entire event. I'm getting a little bored with you being exceptional. Yeah, not bad for somebody who isn't even gifted. Mm, definitely don't want that. Let's try some organic squash. I have a family waiting to adopt three foster children. Now we can do it all in one day. Oh, oh, God. I'm sure that Ned gets the full nutritional benefit this way. Well, I wouldn't feed him anything. I wouldn't eat myself. I never know whether to throw away pictures of people's children. What do we think of Judge Roberta Patterson? She's good. Is she handling Ned's adoption? Yes. 3.15 on Saturday. And I can assume that everybody's going to be there? Oh, well, let's see. My first son's first son is being officially adopted. It might conflict with my water aerobics. <laughs> um, hate to be the Grinch here, but I might not be able to make it work. Carol and I are trying to put a story together, sort of a joint thing between the station and the newspaper. Well, you can be at the next adoption. Mom, I want to be there. I almost got fired a few months ago. I'm just trying to do this right. Okay, Nettie. This one's not so bad. Okay. It's time for grown-ups to eat. Amy? I have a question. Sure. What? Well, as I'm about to officially become a mother and you and I haven't really connected about it, I, I, I'd i like for us to go out for a, a drink or something to, to celebrate. Just you and me? Yeah. You know, kind of a, a girl thing. We could have drinks and tell stories and have hors d'oeuvres and stuff. I mean, we've never really done that kind of thing, mother to mother. It sounds great. Tomorrow night? You are on. <laughs> Okay, Nettie, I'm give you some pureed asparagus. It has a mild flavor. It's full of vitamins. Please? No, I don't think we have a woolly mastodon in the hospital. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, look, Becca, don't go out in the balcony without Mommy, okay? Okay. I love you. 
Right, I'll see you soon. Bye. How's Rebecca and Jordan, New York? Their apartment's on West 73rd Street. Good. They're on the 28th floor. Nice. That's like 800 feet up. Relax, Bruce. It's more than that. Mia's starting this day spa business. She's going to be running around. If it doesn't pan out, I don't know if she's not going to try to take Rebecca to, to Paris or, or Budapest. Wow. New York to Budapest in two neurotic steps. It's not bad. If it makes you feel any better, I'm going to wreck too. About what? The new parking stickers. Adoption day. Aren't you excited? This is me excited. Hey, I just know how much work it took for, for both of us. I was a part of it. You did all the heavy lifting. What if it's a disaster? It was all your idea. <laughs> By the way, a Rob Messler called. Oh, really? A any messages? No, but there was a phone number. I heard screaming in the background. Yeah, he's my uh, my daughter's karate teacher. Hmm. I'm uh, kind of having dinner with him. First a cop, then a karate teacher? Why don't you just get yourself a bodyguard? What can I say? I appeal to men who know how to kill. I'll see you out there. The twins here are all set. DCF has signed off on the application. Now it's just a matter of showing up at the courthouse on Saturday and watching the judge sign the adoption certificate. Oh, I'm so excited. We've waited a long time for this. And you too? Looking forward to Saturday? Definitely. And after you get to go out for tacos and ice cream? Of course you do. It's the law. <laughs> All right. What about Susanna? I'm afraid Susanna's case won't make it this time around. We'll have to arrange it for the next cycle. What? Why? The first attorney failed to process the application properly. It was my fault for not watching him. I found another lawyer to take your case, but she can't be ready by Saturday. We really wanted to adopt all the kids on the same day. Can't you push the lawyer? Jess, adoption days only work because a lot of highly paid lawyers have put in a great deal of pro bono work. We're not in a position to pressure them. Susanna will be 18 in a few weeks. There's no law against adopting a legal adult. I don't want to end my childhood belonging to the state of Connecticut. You know how it is, Susanna. There are legalities. That's just it. My whole life I've been a legality. Ward of the state, foster child. I've been everything except someone's daughter. I realize it's just symbolic and it may seem trivial to you. No. No, it's not trivial. I'm sorry. For a moment there I became a government worker. You have my word. Before you are an adult, you will be someone's child. Lynn, since I've taken over management here, I've made more of an effort to do hard news. Now, Carol has an idea, and she feels that Vincent is the guy for it. Now, his other spots have been well received. All right. Let's hear it. It's about uh, kids doing hard time. Kids? Juvenile offenders, young teenage kids sentenced to time in adult prisons. Hundreds of them, and it's heartbreaking. They're separated from the general population, but still, they get raped, they get beaten up. Sort of a follow-up to my social services story. And? We're envisioning a series of articles that cover all aspects of juvenile justice in Hartford County. You publish each installment, and Vincent does an on-air version for the radio. Criminals in training, our community at risk, we do well with stories like that. But I'm not sure Gray's the man. He's the least experienced writer on my staff, and besides, McAllen's my crime guy. It has to be Vincent. Uh, Carol, maybe Len has a point. I have a lot of good writers. No. Vincent's a guy or we're not interested. Well, Gray, it looks like someone believes in you enough to threaten me. The story's yours. If I had known how great parenting would be, I would have done this years ago. <laughs> It's a miracle, isn't it? Watching these little people discover the joys and mysteries of life. Yeah, it's great. And it goes so fast. When? What? When does it go fast? Because right now it seems to be going not fast. Well, it, it, in the beginning it's, it's a little tough. Like sleeping through the night? That's not going so fast. He's old enough now. You could you could ferberize. I want to ferberize, but Peter says no. He's too young. Can't bear to see him cry. 
He's such a softy, Peter is. <laughs> Some would even say he's a wimp. I wouldn't, of course. Whew, these are going straight to my head. <laughs> well, how long has it been since you've had a night on the town? Oh, you know, the 80s. <laughs> I just wish they would get their information straight. Who? All the baby books. Sterilize the bottles in boiling water. Oh, no, don't put the bottles in water. Use the microwave. It's safer. Of course, there's nothing better than breast milk, but... <clears throat> I don't have breast milk now, do I? Yeah, well, I wouldn't worry about that. I didn't breastfeed Lauren for that long. And, and then I... he starts with the whining. Not the crying, mind you, the whining. This noise that sounds like a car engine that won't turn over. No one tells you about the whining. When he starts to talk, things will get easier. Oh, good. That's only, what, six months away? Is, is Peter helping? He thinks he's helping. I mean, he tries, but it's just, it's never quite right, is it? Well, no. I, I don't know. It, All I'm saying, is it too much to ask that after two million years of evolution, men would be able to snap up a onesie? Peter can't do it? No. He's a math whiz, memorizes actuarial tables, computes premiums in his head, but he cannot count snaps! <laughs> You must think I'm a horrible person. I do love being a mother. Hey, Jillian, there is nothing nice about poopy diapers and screaming babies and months on end without a good night's sleep. It's okay to hate all that stuff. It is? Absolutely. But it's important for you to know that, that things do get better. Thanks, Amy. Can we have another... I love you, Amy. I really do. I love you, too. I mean, you are way too skinny for someone with such a nice rack. And I hate how pretty you look in the morning without any makeup on. <laughs> but basically, I just really love you. Okay, there's a step. <laughs> Can you talk to Peter for me about the fribber rising? Yeah, I'll talk to him. Because I gotta get some sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Take my arm. <laughs> But that would leave you with one. <laughs> Where have you two been? Oh, drinking and talking and drinking and so on. Where have you been? Look, you better pull yourself together. Why, is there a surprise? I love surprises. Hey, Julian. Hi, Amy. How about your ear? <laughs> yeah, it's so great to see him. He's so big. I can't get over how alert he is. He's in the assimilation and accommodation stage. Oh. He's fine. Which we could have told you on the phone if you called like we agreed. I know, I know. Sorry for just showing up like I did, but I was afraid if I called to ask to see him, you would have said no. At least we would have had a choice. Peter, come on, everyone. Let's give Ned and Evie a few minutes alone. Hey, what are you looking at? Hi. We have to start thinking about a strategy. We need a plan of action if she decides to challenge the adoption. She can't do that, can she? No, I don't see any problems. Evie made her decision to give up Ned a long time ago. She can't take it back. But can she hold things up? Just because Evie's here doesn't mean she's going to try something. What if she files some kind of emergency motion or stay or something? It, the most she could do is ask for some kind of a, a formal visitation agreement. What's that? It, well, it would allow her to be involved in Ned's life a little. Just birthdays, holidays. Oh, God. Well, she can't take him back. No, Ned is your son and he's staying that way. But you should have your lawyer inform Evie that there'll be no more unscheduled visits. If there's nothing to worry about, then why do we need to call our lawyer? Just take it easy, Jillian. Evie's parental rights have been terminated. There's nothing she can do. I'm sorry, do you want to leave him alone in there? Yes, of course. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Yeah. Mama's here, Nettie. Mama's here. Yeah. How are you? Hmm? Yeah.
that really necessary? No physical contact. We can't even terminate the visit at any time. Otherwise, you got 20 minutes. Hi. I'm uh, Vincent Gray from the Examiner. Hi. My name is Frank Lee. Thanks for meeting with me. Are you going to get me out of here? Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure I can do that. Because other lawyers said that we could maybe make an appeal. I'm, uh, I'm not a lawyer. I'm a reporter. Tell him I promise to go to school. That won't ditch. I'll listen to Janine. I'll do whatever she says. Do you know why you're in here? It wasn't my idea to rob the quick shop. It was Tony's. He said no one would get hurt. And I didn't know about the gun. Your, your lawyer told me that you're serving four years? Yeah. But Tony, he only got long lane. But he had the gun. It's not fair. No, it probably isn't. Can you help me? You can tell him about the gun. Yeah, maybe I can. I, mean, I just, um, I want to tell your story. I'm missing school. I was supposed to make a relief map. I've South America, I missed Duncan's class. Maybe they'll let you head in late. You think? I miss my family. That man that was killed, he had a family too. It's just that this girl has spent her entire childhood in foster care. Miss Gray, Maxine, when you gave this to me two weeks ago, you must have known I couldn't possibly be ready by Saturday. I know, I know. Yes. But Susanna wants to be adopted before her 18th birthday in three weeks. We are talking about half a city block near the West End, right on the Fulham Road. My client would, what is the word, kill me if I stayed in Hartford an extra day and botched this. You show up for court at noon. You get on a plane one hour later. Two at most. In midday traffic? I don't drive that fast. We'll provide a car at our expense. DCF is going to send a car for me? Maxine Gray is going to send a car. I'll pay out of pocket. Sorry, no. Ms. Lansdowne, I have been with DCF for over 30 years. I've seen my share of pressing cases, and I've made many of them work, one way or another, because lives were at stake or, or something was about to be done that couldn't be undone. Just this once. I would like to see the system provide more than food and shelter and uh, basic safety. I would like this once to see us grant a wish. He didn't even understand I was a reporter. Well, uh, Frank's 14. He doesn't understand much. I'm not saying that my client's a saint. I mean, he was right there when his friend executed that store clerk. But Frank didn't kill anyone. There's still a shred of a human being left. But if he goes to prison, he can pretty much write his life off. So why is he in a juvenile facility? How does something like this happen? I have my suspicions. Well, share them. It's politics. You mean politicians? Can we go off the record? Okay. I can't prove anything, but after Columbine, I noticed that a couple of judges were shipping a lot more juvenile cases to adult court. Who benefits from that? Someone who said he's going to run for Congress on a get tough law and order platform. Someone who's already risen to the top position in the Hartford Judicial District. Why haven't you spoken up about this? Like I said, I have no proof. And a defense attorney doesn't go around making accusations like that against the most powerful judge in the county. Not if he knows what's good for his clients. Who's the judge? The right Honorable Clarence Faraday. Yeah, I think I've heard that name. Of course you have. He's your sister's boss. Okay. That's 24 adoptions, you alone. And there might be some spillover from other judges. Up or down? Down. Faraday's very excited about this, you know. I'm not going to get any credit. Well, that's not what I meant it for. Earrings? Judge Gray. I'm really not comfortable in the girlfriend role. Right. Sorry. But I'm sure your day's going to go fine. Judge Gray? I'm sorry. Judge Gray's about to leave for the day. Uh, no, 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 that's okay, Bruce. Um, I'll see you tomorrow. What can I do for you, Evie? Are you handling the adoption? No, I'm not. Oh, 
Well, uh, I know it's happening tomorrow, and I kind of wanted to be there for it. Well, that's up to Peter and Jillian. Eh, they'll just say no. That's their right. I might have made a mistake giving up my baby. Do you think Jillian and Peter are going to be good parents? I think they are. Well, Jillian seemed a little drunk the other night. Does she drink often? Jillian's an excellent mother. What's more, she and Peter are the only parents that Ned has ever known. Well, I have this friend who's a lawyer, and he was telling me that maybe I could get visitation so I'd be allowed to see Ned sometimes. Yes, that's true. What if I did that? Well, it would mean that you and Peter and Jillian would work out some kind of an agreement, schedule certain dates, and stick to them. You can't just show up whenever you want to. And if I found the father, he'd have certain rights, too? Y yes, of course. Biological fathers always have certain rights, but that... I, I was just wondering. Evie, what you're proposing is not necessarily in the best interests of the child. So then I was in this big Wall Street firm. Uh, our specialty was defending our slimy corporate weasels from the depredations of slightly more slimy corporate weasels. Someone's got to protect the weasels. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it wasn't God's work. I always knew I didn't have the disposition for a high-pressure job. Kind of drove my parents crazy. Four years at Wesleyan and you're going to open a dojo? But I think of it as being a small business owner. Well, how'd you get interested in karate? Like anyone else, Bruce Lee movies. Oh. <laughs> the obsession grew from there. I became interested in all kinds of Eastern philosophies. I spent some time in China, so I kind of picked up the language. You, you kind of picked up Chinese. For me, that usually involves Mugu Gai Pan from the Peking Moon. Didn't they change the name of that place to Beijing? Well, now you're shutting off. <laughs> <laughs> well, in retrospect, the one nice thing about working in corporate law was that on some level, it, it just didn't matter. It must have been all those millions of dollars in stake. If I filed late to the SEC, no six-year-old would get molested by your stepfather. If I, if I drew up an imperfect contract, it wouldn't give some sadist the chance to pour cough syrup in his son's ear until he passed out. God. Well, you're the black belt. You got any wax on, wax off wisdom for me? All I know is kids grow up powerless. That's what we're all angry about. I try to create a place for my kids where they have power, strength, will. Maybe that's what you do. That absolutely did not help you at all, did it? No. No, actually it did. Thanks. Anyone ever tell you what good in winter? Can you say that in Mandarin? rain anyway. Is that polite for golf ball size sleet? You look terrible. My car wouldn't start. Oh no, you walked? In the freezing rain. Well, it's just as well. The roads are a mess. My hair is a mess. Everything's a mess. You getting sick? I'm sure it's just allergies. We should just cancel this whole thing. Uh, yo, whoa, whoa, young man, slow down. This is 
not quite what I pictured. Don't worry, it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, look, the scary guy from Channel 10. I had nightmares about that too fat. People ask me, Josh Faraday, why are you doing this? And I tell them, Adoption Day is all about the kids. It's all about family. Do you have any anti-nausea drugs? Let's get out of here. Oh, th there's one of our steam judges now, Judge Gray. Judge Gray, how does it feel to be participating in this joyful event? Fine, but I'm not the judge. She is. Judge, what does it feel like to be making history here in Hartford? I, well, it, it feels, um, good. <laughs> really extremely, uh, um, good. Uh, how many adoptions do you hope to process today? Uh, well, we're looking at about 200, cut. and we're hoping to... Cut. Can we cut, please? I'm sorry, but she's not coming across so well. Let's go back to Judge Faraday. Uh, baby. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. <sighs> you can have a meeting here. Maintenance didn't get the memo about this weekend, so all the furnaces are shut down. Well, who the hell let that fall through the cracks? We did. Oh, really? But they've put in space heaters in all the courtrooms. So. Oh, I have a brilliant idea. Talk me out of it. Ah, so how'd it go? What? Date with the karate kid. He's just a few years younger than me. You never mentioned he was younger. No, I mean, I mean, he's he's twenty-five, ish. He's very mature. Besides, it, it wasn't really a date. It was more like a, more like an outing. An outing? What is this, a Jane Austen novel? Oh. oh, God, Bruce, I can't go out with my daughter's karate teacher. He's a kid. It's okay if you like him. It's a rebound. Everybody gets one. You know, the person that you have fun with, but you have no intention of settling down with. It's allowed. It is? But what happens in a rebound relationship? Mostly sex. I I'm not going to sleep with my diverse karate teacher. That's insane. I want a real relationship. Okay, I forget I mentioned it. Honestly. Who are you calling? Just checking your messages. Go fire up the space here. Thanks. What if she doesn't come? She'll come. We talked yesterday, and I set a car for her. I knew this wasn't going to work out. It's the story of my life. Lawyers. <laughs> Always late. Oh. Marjorie, am I glad to see you. You owe me big. This is Alice and Jess Jankel. Where's the girl? Susanna, this is your attorney, Marjorie Lansdowne, and the twins and their attorney, Joseph Kaur. Nice to meet you. Are we still on schedule? Uh, you, oh, uh, 12 o'clock. It's confirmed. Good, because I don't want any surprises. I'm going to get some coffee. Well, she doesn't have the best possible bedside manner, but in just a few minutes, you will be one big happy family. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry about the temperature, Mr. and Mrs. Flatner, but that won't prevent us from getting on with the business at hand, which is making Megan your officially adopted daughter. Now, I see you brought some other people with you today. Would you like to introduce yourself, you guys? These are our sons, Stephen and Jeffrey. They were adopted last year. Oh, and now it's Megan's turn. <laughs> Megan, are you excited? I'm cold. Yes, we're all cold. So we'll try to do this as, as quickly as possible. 
Uh, now, once I issue the adoption certificate, Megan will be your real daughter and must be treated in all respects as your lawful child. You will bear the same rights and responsibility towards her as you do towards your other yes. children. Yes. We understand. Before I sign the certificate, let me just say, on a personal note, what a pleasure it is to meet people like yourselves who open your hearts and your homes to children in need. Families are the, are the touchstone of our society. Judge Gray, I'm sorry. We've been through this twice already, and with the weather so bad, we like to just get on the road while we still can. Oh. Of course. Uh, well, then, by order of this court, by the power invested in me by the County of Hartford and the State of Connecticut, I hereby sign and issue the adoption certificate for Megan Louise Plattner. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Well, would she like a teddy bear? We already got some. Thank you. Well, I'm just all shook up. You've got 23 more families. You'll have your moment. Movie. I had to walk. Oh. It's leading like crazy. Uh, really? I thought it was freezing rain. Uh. So, how's the story going? You didn't call last night. I figured you were onto something. Uh, I have kind of a situation. Uh, didn't you talk to Frank Lee? Yeah, I, I talked to him. Look, Carol, I can't do this piece. Why? Because I can't. This is a good story, and somebody should follow up on it, but it can't be me. Vincent, I and... I insisted on you writing the story. This will look really bad for me. I know. I'm sorry. This is much bigger than we imagined. It's a political thing. It goes way up the ladder. Wait a second. High-level corruption? This is getting really good. Well, yeah. Vincent, this is a career-making story. You don't just walk away from something like this. I won't let you. I would have to go on record accusing the top judicial figure in the county of political expedience. Even if I wanted to, the whole thing would be tainted by association. I need you to trust me on this. So much for trust. Trust comes from people being reliable. I was hoping you'd understand. You're doing this to protect your sister, aren't you? Vincent, are you ever going to be willing to put yourself first? I can't answer that. Then no one else will either. And Mrs. Jan Kell. Someone has been looking out for you. My docket has been full and locked up for some time now. We've been lucky, Your Honor. Now, oh, today I'm signing off on the adoptions of uh, Ginny, Todd, as well as Susanna. All lawyers present? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get the formalities out of the way. First, in the matter of Susanna, Miss Lansdowne has submitted all of the necessary papers. Now, Susanna... You realize you're being adopted and that you will, from this day forward, be considered the legal child of Alice and Jess Jankell. Yes, sir. Mr. and Mrs. Jankell, you realize that Susanna is entitled to all rights. Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, then, to the matter of the twins, Ginny and Todd. Do you understand that you're being adopted by the Jankells, and do you agree with these terms? Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. Todd, wh what do you mean? 
No, I don't want to be adopted. Todd, since you're 12, you can't be adopted without your consent. Now, you realize your statement will be recorded and cannot be recanted. Yes, sir. Your Honor, with his parents' permission, I'd like an opportunity to speak with Todd. All right, but only 10 minutes, Miss Gray. We've got a lot of adoptions to get to. Come on, Nettie. Wave to Daddy. Oh, this is your big day. Come on, give us a big smile. You too, Mommy. My jaw is starting to hurt, honey. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a break. Mm. And here we have all the other families adopting boys and girls. Everybody's very excited. They're all dressed up. Oh, God. What? I saw her. Who? Phoebe? You never told anyone you didn't want to be adopted. Well, nobody asked. Don't you like the Jack Hells? Sure, they're nice. Well, don't you want to stay with them and grow up in their house? Sure. Then why don't you want to be adopted? Because then Alice would be my mom, and I already have a mom. Your mom has been gone for a long time. I know. She left us in a grocery store, I remember. She told us to uh, wait by the cereal. So we waited for like two hours. But she never came. Honey, it's been eight years. We haven't heard a word from your mother. But you can't promise she'll never come back. No, I can't. Can I live with Jan Kills even if I'm not adopted? Yes. Okay, then I don't want to be adopted because if my mom ever comes back, then I don't want to be her kid again. Actually freeze? Apparently so. Hey, am I interrupting? I'm just having some tuna slurpees. Vincent, I, I, I didn't think you'd be able to come. No, oh, no problem. Just to mush the ice light on over. Well, what about your story? Uh, I kind of fell through. Oh, I'm sorry. I know it was a big deal. That's okay. I'd rather be doing this anyway. Okay, um, I'll just go chisel the ice off your bench. Back in five. Is Carol coming? Nah, I doubt it. Things are pretty busy, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm really glad you could come. Look. I know things have been kind of tense between us lately. I guess it just happens when people actually start living their lives, which is, I haven't been doing up until now. So we're probably going to continue to disagree about stuff. But I just wanted to tell you, I really respect you. And I think what you do is incredible. Vincent, I really needed to hear that. And also, I love you. Oh. Oh, my God. And also, your nose is running. <laughs> I besmirched the sleeve of justice. <laughs> it's off the record. Okay, that's it. Congratulations. Okay, that's it. 24 cases finalized, and you have 10 minutes before Ned's adoption. Good work. Go home, Bruce. You're sick. Thank you. Judge Gray, about today... It was a disaster, I know. Made me proud what I do. 
Thank you. Oh. Well, thank you, too. <clears throat> it's for your daughter. Oh, by the way, Cole. Who? Rebound Rob. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Peter and Jillian, congratulations on your big day. And welcome to the whole extended family. Well, I see all your paperwork is in order. I would expect no less from such a legal family. I also see that Ned has gotten his teddy bear, which is very important. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is a closed proceeding unless you're with the family. No, she's not. Who are you, young lady? Do you care to identify yourself? I'm the, uh... Nobody. I, I just wanted to watch. Well, that's up to the parents. She can stay. Then let's proceed. Peter, Jillian, once I issue this decree... Ned will become your son in every sense of the word. You bear all legal responsibilities towards him, including rights of inheritance. Is that understood? Yes. Yes. And we'll have to assume that Ned would agree to be adopted if he could speak. <laughs> so by the power vested in me by the county of Hartford, the state of Connecticut, I issue this adoption certificate. Edward Matthew Gray is all yours. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Please, Peter, let me do that. Ain't it always in the back of your mind? Now every little thing gets so complicated. I call out to the wind for an answer, but silence was the wind's reply. Sometimes the mystery makes me cry. Coming up next on TNT's Prime Time in the Daytime, Amy faces a difficult decision in her personal life. Judging Amy is next on TNT.